to understand how and why there was a cataclysmic shift in Muslims' perception of the Jewish people after 13 centuries of peaceful cohabitation, there is no other way but to take a clear-cut point of view from an Arab Muslim perspective when revealing the sequential events that took place and the resultant impact on the mental, philosophical, and emotional spheres of Arab Muslim societies. And not only during that moment in history when things kicked off with the Balfour Declaration in 1917, but with the progression of time and how each new generation of Arab Muslims built upon the negative sentiments of their ancestors towards the Jewish people. But to begin our ordered examination of the causes, we must go further back in time, to the late 19th century, and assimilate the Jewish narrative from their own perspective so we can understand the belief system that was about to be indoctrinated in Jews around the world. Before the turn of the century, and due to various anti-Semitic events throughout Europe, Jewish thinkers and sympathizers identified that the best outcome for the Jews was to establish their own nation to be able to protect their people from persecution. The Zionist organization was established in 1897 with the sole purpose of creating a Jewish nation in Palestine and the return of the historic exiles to their self-anointed and rightful homeland. All efforts, kosher or not, would be a means to this end. And here's where we revert back to the Muslim point of view. Zionism claimed that Zion, that hill in Jerusalem, Jerusalem itself, and all the lands that had formed the nation of Israel in antiquity were rightfully Jewish and belonged to the chosen people. The issue with this entitled claim was that when the Zionist movement was established, only 27,000 Jews lived in Palestine, making up less than 8% of the entire population in that area. In fact, the Jewish population in Palestine was an extreme minority in the area for over a millennium. The majorities during that time were either Christian or Muslim. How is Palestine even remotely a Jewish nation? These are all lies. I see many Christians and Muslims. There are more Jews living in Syria, Iraq, and Egypt this year than there have been in Palestine for the past 1,000 years. After substantial internal and external lobbying by Zionist supporters and the British government, the Balfour Declaration was announced. Here were the British, making a promise to the Jewish people that they were committed to uphold the establishment of a single Jewish nation in Palestine, while in parallel, in secret and in bad faith, enacted the Sykes-Picot Agreement, thus partitioning the Arab lands, splitting them into two mandates, one British, the other French. Promises made to the Jews were kept, those made to Arabs, of a single unified nation, broken. The people of Palestine, in any case, had no say in either matter. The Western powers are infiltrated by the Zionists. We fought for them against the Ottomans during the war, and they backstab us by granting the Jews a nation stolen from our lands. And we, Arab Muslims, have to submit to their treacherous rule. With the formalization of the British Mandate for Palestine, thus began a systemic and programmed immigration policy that would see Jews grow in population over the next 30 years by tenfold. Such an influx of people who felt an entitlement to these lands weren't content with simply immigrating, but wanted to comprehensively replace the indigenous populations. Not only did the British turn a blind eye to the various transgressions committed by the Zionists in breaking all the allocated annual Jewish immigration quotas, but confiscations of Christian and Muslim property were overlooked and to make matters worse, the British authority began granting concessions to the Jewish business community on strategic public services like electricity. This isn't immigration. This is a licensed and calculated annexation of Muslim land, in-your-face robbery that is condoned by the West. This is completely unfair and unacceptable. Why isn't the world doing anything to stop this? Three years after World War II, while the whole Western world was sympathizing with the plight and suffering of the Jewish people, license was granted by the international community to announce the establishment of the State of Israel, thus carving out 77% of the landmass of what was Palestine. 750,000 Palestinians were expelled and stripped of any possessions. The same exact thing that the Nazis had enforced on the Jews a mere decade earlier was now being forced upon the Palestinians by the Israeli Jews. No reproach by the international community towards the Jews, no sympathy shown towards the Palestinians. How can a people that claim the devastation of a Holocaust act in such an inhumane manner, treating us this way, turning Palestinians into refugees with no homes and no possessions? Israelis are godless, merciless, and would be punished for all their actions. Please subscribe to our channel as it would support us greatly in generating more content that documents our Arabian and Muslim heritage, history, and culture. Now back to our story.
Arabs will contend that the Yom Kippur War in 1973 was a significant and resounding success. On the grander scheme of things, and in the aggregate, this last war, the Suez Crisis and Six-Day War, were all wars that the Arab Muslims failed to really gain anything lost to the Israeli Jews. And failure weakens the spirit, and it also makes one bitter, internally bitter towards their own countries and their shortcomings, and externally more bitter towards an enemy who has outdone them time and time again. We can't defeat them, and any dream of returning what's rightfully ours, our ancestral lands, our holy city of Jerusalem, is no longer valid. We are weak, and they are strong. Since the last war with the Arabs, repression took on a whole new level in Israel. Further deportations, imprisonment, expropriation and expanded settlement into Palestinian lands, and an intense cracking down on daily life aimed for total humiliation of the Palestinians. No one was exempt from experiencing this version of indignity, women, children or the elderly. Muslims around the Middle East were aware of these deplorable actions by the Israeli Jewish authorities. Western nations, again, either feigned ignorance or simply didn't care. Their strategic relationship with Israel trumped any need for recognition or reprimand of any inhumane indiscretions. The whole world is against us and aligned with them. No one cares for the Palestinians. Our suffering is inconsequential, and the main culprit is Israel and its people, along with the West, who endlessly support them. Damn them. And these actions by Israel continue on today. Only now, due to the ease of exhibiting reality through digital platforms, the world can see the actions of a Jewish nation that never really believed in or wanted cohabitation, but one that demands the segregation and suppression of the Palestinian people by constantly invading their towns and villages and displacing them with newly minted Jewish citizens. It's a shame that what the Muslims of antiquity had implemented in terms of the protection of the lives and possessions of Jews as paramount to a peaceful coexistence wasn't adhered to when it came to the actions of Israeli Jews. One might have thought that if such wisdom had been in place since 1948, when rights and freedoms of every people and faith took precedence over the entitled affirmation of a self-proclaimed chosen people, then we'd be experiencing a far different sentimental reality when speaking of Jewish and Muslim relations. <laughs>